Trust versus LLC. What to do? What to do? I had a client this weekend buy a nice piece of property and they wanted to know should they put it in a trust or do an LLC. So as a certified financial planner, you know I had to give them some advice, right? So we're going to talk about the advice that works for them, might not work for you, but why you should use this to your advantage to make sure that we write off taxes, get more money in our pocket, and be able to get to the bag. Before we get started, as always, though, like, share, subscribe to our channel as we continue to grow. We're here to give information on these YouTube streets. I give out a lot of information in real life. I am a certified financial planner, I managed over $250 million in assets, so I think I'm a pretty good resource, but let's go to why we should do a trust, put it to an LLC, or vice versa. Eh, let's say what to do and why. Lego, the question was, I bought this property, it's a rental property, what should I do? Should I put it into my trust, put it as an LLC, what should I do? Well, the first thing, right, it's like a pyramid right pyramid right top and bottom top and bottom at the very very top in my opinion of course you want to talk to the state attorney and a certified financial planner so we can definitely talk about that as well but the top of the pyramid is always trust t-r-u-s-t -T, right and the reason why because the trust is for distribution if i was to pass away heaven forbid something happens right the trust allows my assets not to go to probate right that's why we do a trust it bypasses probate you get a will a will you can say yes you get this you get that still goes through probate right so it's going to cost a lot of money to go through probate depending on your assets of course you have a lawyer dollar 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 bills y'all and he or she's going to make sure you pay to get out of probate as well and then it's time it's not like snap of the fingers you know on the movies it's like okay let's look at the wheel and then the lawyer's there in his office or at the house talking about you was left this the wheel left this in the wheel left that in the wheel no that's movies it's not real life in real life you have a judge and he or she boom bangs that gavel whatever the wheel says goes but it still goes through probate with the trust a little bit different the trust it bypasses probate. It's a private document. So yes, an attorney might have to administer that trust, but from a cost standpoint, especially if you have a lot of assets, you will not have to go to probate if you have things into that trust. So that's why the top of the pyramid, at the tippy tippy top, we first want to have our trust in order. So with the pyramid, do the trust first. So we got the trust. Now, the next, right? Then we want to do our LLC, but we're going to say times three. So yes, you're asking, why three LLCs? Everybody's situation is different. But in this situation, three LLCs for that same property is the way to go. You're like, isn't that overkill? Well, first and foremost, recommended wise, every property that you have should have at least one LLC, right? Think about it. If I have four properties, four, not one, not two, not three, but four properties, and within those four properties, one of those properties, somebody slips and falls and hurts themselves, one of the renters, and they go to suing, right? Well, guess what? They're going to sue that LLC. If you have four properties under that one LLC, all four properties are now liable. So if you have your bank account attached to those four LLCs from a rental standpoint, that bank account and all that money into it is liable. So to decrease liability and reduce risk, and we all want to reduce risk, that's why I recommend worst case, the least amount, every property that you have should have its own LLC. But to have extra steps of protection, in this person's case, actually three LLCs for that property was the way to go. We're gonna talk about LLC one, two and three and why each one was beneficial for them all right my profiteers so the first llc number one that holds the mortgage the reason why is because again we don't want to have all our other assets tangled up in a mortgage right so the first llc just maintains a mortgage and we know 
talk to a tax professional, prefer a CPA. I'm a certified financial planner. We can give strategy, but make sure when you file it, you work with a CPA. Um, it is write-offs tied to that mortgage, right? We know with the interest that we have and other things, we're able to write some of those off. Again, talk to your CPA, but we want to have that first LLC, just the mortgage, just by itself. So nothing else. So the LLC, number one, holds the mortgage. That's LLC number one. Remember, same property, but three different LLCs. But the first LLC is where the actual mortgage. So if you pay for a cash, a lot of people pay for something cash and then refinance, right? So they can have those write-offs or use the capital, right, to acquire more properties. But we want to make sure from a risk standpoint, the first, number one, of that property, three LLCs, but the first is tied to the mortgage by itself. That's number one. Now, let's go to number two. All right, my profiteers, the second one, right? Ownership. I will just put ownership, excuse my handwriting, right? Ownership. The reason why, right, is because we want to, what you have, anonymity. We don't want everybody that knows what's going on in our business, right? So after we've received the mortgage, we then set up the second LLC. And then we transfer the ownership from the first LLC to the second LLC. We do this because, of course, people could be looking up information, right? They look up the mortgage, look up what it is. But if you transfer it and now your asset is held under the second LLC, don't nobody know what's going on, right? It's your information, but they don't know who's the holder of the property anymore because it's transferred. Now, something to think about, which is very important. You do have to get with your mortgage company first because some mortgage companies, if you transfer into ownership, right, from one to another, either into a trust completely or in a holding company, which is an LLC, they sometimes make you pay either all the mortgage, whoa, or some of the mortgage. So it is a caveat. You want to get with the mortgage company to basically let you know if you can do it or not. Because what you don't want to do, you don't want to move it from one LLC to another, not talk to them, and then you get a letter, right? Then you're in some trouble. Either you move it back to the first LLC or you got to pay. And some people are not in a position if they got a mortgage out. Some people are. So very important. Talk to your lender before doing this. But for any reasons, and to make sure that ain't nobody all in your pockets per se, this is why I would say the second LLC after the first one. So you can get the mortgage on the first LLC and then you do the second LLC ownership from the first LLC, the second LLC by doing that, that allows to make sure that everybody in your business, right? It allows you to kind of run things smoother and it decreases liability, which is big from a asset protection standpoint. But my profiteers first second but then a third llc with the same property let's go over that too my profiteers the third and final llc for the same property management yes number three management and again excuse my scribble scrabble but we get it management the reason why is because now you are managing that property right the reason why that's key is because who's collecting the rent? Not you, the person, not you, the owner of one of those LLCs, but now you have a separate management company. We created a company. If we created a company, what can we do? Now we can pay ourselves a salary. Now, yes, there's payroll taxes involved, right? Social Security tax, Medicare tax. But guess what we do? We pay ourselves a salary, make sure the salary is justifiable, right? You can't pay yourself too little or too much, make sure it's justifiable. But by paying us a salary, guess what, my profiteers? We now get write-offs, state write-offs, local write-offs, federal write-offs. What else we can do, right? Now we can, from a retirement standpoint, we can open up that SEP IRA. Because I might imagine you're the solo owner right if you're the solo owner then we have a set by array so now whatever we pay ourselves with that set by array we can do up to fifty six thousand dollars or 25 percent into retirement so now we are having more write-offs right because we're making money 
and now we're putting that money into our set by array. When money goes into your set by array, you're investing in the stock market, which is amazing. And number two, we're able to get the write it off as well, lowering the taxable income. So the rental income that I'm getting from the renter, right? I'm now decreasing my taxable income because of that set by array. So now I'm really making money, but also saving money. But it gets better. Because I'm a management company, guess what I get to do? When I travel, right? So we're in beautiful Florida. But if I go to Georgia, let's say I go on a Wednesday, right? If I go to Invest Fest like I did a few weeks ago, right? And I have clients that are realtors, which I do. And you know what? It's a property that I like. I'm going to, I'm going to check that out. So my real estate agent on a Wednesday shows me a property. That means that 50, 60, maybe 70% of my whole trip now is a write-off. Now, let's say I leave on Sunday. It's another property that I want to see. Guess what? We'll do that as well. So that Wednesday to Sunday, I've seen two properties. That trip, it's a write-off. Can we write off 100% of the trip? Of course not. It has to be justifiable. But now since I have that management company and I want to have other properties inside that management company. Now, when I travel looking for companies, it is a justifiable write-off. So now my travel's a write-off. Airlines could be a write-off. Talk to your CPA, right? Hotel could be a write-off. Talk to your CPA. So now the things that we do from a vacation standpoint is a vacation, but it's a working vacation because I have that third LLC that's a management company. My profiteers, those are write-offs. So that's why for Every single property in this person's scenario, because of the cash share that it has coming in, I recommend it as a certified financial planner for him to do three LLCs. First one for the mortgage, when the mortgage is done. Second one, transfer ownership from the first to the second. So it's ambiguity there, right? Left hand don't know what the right hand is doing like in the Bible. Again, talk to your mortgage company. And the third one, management so that you are your own management company managing that property so people cut the grass management company right off right somebody bust a hole in the wall gotta be fixed property management company could be a write-off so now the things that you're doing for the upkeep of the house that if it was just the owner of the house i don't know property management company now it might be talk to your cpa the chance for you to have write-offs and that, my friends, is how we make money by saving money. Because we can make $100,000, but if $40,000 goes to the IRS, what type of fund is that? But now we can make $100,000 and only $10,000 per se goes to the IRS. We save $30,000. Over three years, that's almost $100,000 of income that we save. So a lot of times, it's not how much we make, it's how much we save. So here from a pyramid standpoint, trust, LLC as a holding company, and then the bottom of the pyramid, first LLC, second LLC, third LLC. So when it comes to the question, should I do a trust or LLC when it comes to my properties? Well, you might want to do both. Well, my profiteers, I know we talk about stocks, but I'm a certified financial planner, so I always like to drop jewels on why it is important if we are doing rental income to look into doing LLCs. Now, yes, it's a cost, right? Anytime we do an LLC, we do have to file with the state. It's extra paperwork we have to do from a tax standpoint. So you have to weigh the cost of that. But if we can save us more money, have those extra write-offs with the SEP IRA or the write-offs with business standpoint that I talked about, it might be. Not probably, not probably not, but it might be well worth it to do those three steps with each property. So we have four properties, 12 LLCs. It's a lot to juggle. But if you're doing your bookkeeping right, you have your automation correct, shouldn't be that hard. And if you have a great CPA that I have, of course, so you know, I'm a CFP, I have a CPA, then that definitely helps with the process. But comment below. Is that overkill when it comes to LLCs? Hit the mark. Anyways, oh, love is love. Do your research. Let's make some painful promise together, y'all.
making the money mistakes Make a payment on your bills and you still late, yeah Paying for profits to help you seek change, uh And you just wanna get paid, yeah Tired of making the money mistakes Make a payment on your bills and you still late, uh Paying for profits to help you seek change, yeah Cut the show and just listen You wanna feel empowered by making money decisions Residual by the hours can get you a better living, uh Bitch, check the check, you know and it could be different, you know and